Hey PC World fans, Adam here with Gordon, and Gordon, 13th gen has arrived. Uh, this is the last major CPU launch of the year, maybe. Maybe. Probably. Maybe. Probably. probably. Most likely. Uh, but you are coming to us hot off the presses with a, a review of the 13900K, the top end line, uh, chip in the lineup, and you put it up against uh, three other parts. What, what, what parts were those? So we're comparing it to basically the current top end AMD part, Ryzen 9 7950X. You know it, you love it as well as the older previous top of the line parts, the core i9-12900K Intel 12th gen part, and of course the beloved Ryzen 9 5950X, which you can still get on fantastic deals these days. If you want to go over all the details of, of what 13th gen brings and all that stuff, uh, go, go read the review on the website. Uh, there's details on that. We're going to dive straight into benchmarks because Gordon, I want to know there's been a lot of talks can Intel keep up with Zen 4? How's it going to be? Uh, and, and that's what we're here to find out. So, Gordon, let's start off with some sy synthetic benchmarks. Let's go with the tried and true Cinebench R23. What, what are we looking at in Cinebench? So what we're looking at first, because a lot of the journey starts here. Everybody loves it because it's so easy to run. It is synthetic, but it is based on a real-world engine if you do 3D rendering, Maxon. It's even inc included in uh, After Effects, some kind of uh, real-world applications there. But what we want to see is how 16 cores works against 24 cores. Of course, that's eight performance cores with 16 uh, efficiency cores. So how does that stack up? And bam, you see the result right here where you're looking at a 13900K versus a 7950X, all core load, basically 5% faster, 4.77%, but really it's 5%, right? We'll round that one up. So solid 5% ahead of the fastest AMD part. I would call that a very decent performance. Of course, people go like, oh, 24 cores versus 16, should I get more? But actually that is pretty awesome. Again, they are uh, dealing with 7950X, which is running very hard. They're also using leading edge TSMC process. In the end, they're still actually faster in the, the wildly popular Cinebench R23. Mm -hmm. So if you do uh, 3D rendering and you're using a, a Cinema 4D or using any Cinema 4D products that it's based on, uh, Alder Lake is, uh, or Raptor Lake is actually doing quite well. Uh, but Gordon, what what's the power profile for this one? Uh, well, yeah, so let's talk about that. So there are there are different ways to look at the CPU. Um, on the board I use, which was a Z790 MSI carbon Wi-Fi board, when you put in your cooler and you basically, it recognizes new CPU, you set it up, you boot it, it goes like, do you have a, a water cooler? Do you have a tower cooler or do you have a box cooler? And I selected water cooler. And basically the board automatically goes, let's give you unlimited PL1, PL2, which is basically how you set sort of your, your, your limits for the CPU, power limits for the CPU. Um, it's essentially unlimited uh, PL1, PL2 by default. For my tests though, I actually stuck to Intel's stated 253 watt PL1, PL2. If you go and look at Intel Arc, it will say TDP rating is 253. That's basically what I tried to stick to okay. versus uh, unlimited. But I will, the spoiler is it didn't really matter that much. The unlimited setting really gives you 2% more on all core loads. And actually, um, in some things, running at 253 PL1, PL2 is actually faster. Hmm. Like I saw decent increases in and a lot of lightly threaded loads that I really didn't expect. I always kind of wonder if that's almost like that undervolting, you know, thing that people love to do. Gordon, you just undervolted. You, Good I job. Not, you, just, I, you did it. Here we go. Right, it's I five. undervolted, <laughs> but you know, it's actually according to Intel spec. I will point out, I don't really know what spec is anymore because, again, if you take this CPU, you put it into any high-end motherboard, five hundred dollars, and it's going to basically set this chip to run as hard as it can. Hmm. So I don't think you're really going to get most. Uh, results that match the 253. It's probably going to be higher results. So we will have a video on the channel where we go over power uh, and the testing you did uh, there around the two different power limits. We're, so we're, we're not going to dive into it here. Go watch that video. Uh, but for now, l at least we know that uh, results like here from Cinebench uh, are using that 253 watt spec. So correct? Yes. Yes, that is correct. And I also do want to point out uh, one important thing. Uh, 
I would say it's, even though uh, Raptor Lake is ahead by 5%, it's, who cares, right? To me, it's kind of a wash. Probably more important for somebody who is shopping in this range of CPU, and if you're buying a nine class Ryzen or core part, you want as much multi-core performance as you can. That's what you should be doing if you're spending all this extra money. You should also look at the performance of the Ryzen 9 5950X, because that is still a very realistic option for people that are considering upgrading to that part or upgrading from that part as well as the previous 12th gen alder lake chip you're looking at 46 percent for the 13900k over the 12900k so that is a significant increase in performance from gen to gen which does really matter of course we also saw that with uh, ryzen 7002 and you're looking at a, a full-on 55 percent for 13900k versus uh, 5950x <laughs> So if you are shopping for, I need as many cores and threads as I can, you got to consider 7950X and 13900K. I would say it's honestly worth upgrading from those parts or skipping those parts entirely. Because if you're buying a chip with 16 or 24 cores, you obviously have the applications that can drive it. <laughs> All right, speaking of applications, uh, we have another one, Pavray, or I'm sorry, V-Ray. V-Ray, what, what are the results here? Yeah, so uh, again, this is one of the things where when you get to 16 big cores, remember uh, AMD does not use efficiency cores or performance cores, they're all performance cores. Uh, some things they basically run harder than the 24 cores of Intel. I don't know exactly why that is. That would take basically a lot of work to figure out the ins and outs of why they're winning. But the nice thing about being just a dumb hardware reviewer like me is I can just tell you what's faster. And the faster <laughs> part, is Ryzen 9 7950X. Oh, there you go, boom. Uh, it's about an uh, 8% advantage for Ryzen 9 7950X over 13900K. I would say that's, again, decent, but not the end of the world. Again, because uh, like 5% is like, okay, 5%. 8%, same thing, I would say. It's like, uh, you could, other things can factor into it, but I just want to point out, in some things, just having fewer, more performance cores might actually be better than having more cores uh, with some efficiency, some performance, because maybe you're running into power limits of the CPU, the socket, and maybe you're also looking into software limitation because not all applications scale up perfectly to infinite infinite amounts of uh, cores. True, well, and, and you see that with the uh, the 5950X versus the 12900K, the, the AMD was still in the lead there. Yeah, uh, so. yeah. And okay. then, you know, I mean, 13900K versus 12900K and V-Rate though still, Killing it pretty good, 48%, and uh, about a good 36% over that 5950X, but uh, mm -hmm. it does lose the 7950X. Okay, all right, well, what about Blender? Ah, Blender is another interesting one, again, where um, AMD has a nice lead. Uh, not huge, but again, decent. You know, if you're at, you have to have the absolute must, must faster chip because you use Blender, it's gonna be 7950X. For yep. this, I'm using Blender 3.3, using the Cycles render engine, and uh, tile size is 2048, and basically 8.3% uh, faster. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, I was gonna say bigger bar better, but in this case, shorter bar better, so. Yeah, shorter uh. <laughs> bar, because when you're doing a render, the way I look at it is if you're spending less time to render, that's the win here, and you're spending a few more seconds on that Ryzen part. Uh, but again, against the older 12th gen, as well as the uh, 5950X, Raptor Lake is doing pretty well, right? Yeah. You're looking at decent 48% to 36% faster renders. Hmm. Okay, all right. Well, what about Pavre? Uh, Pavre is the last of the all multi-core 3D rendering uh, applications we're gonna talk about here. There's two numbers you see, blue bar and red bar. Um, this is again one of those things where it's a back and forth. I will say Ryzen doesn't win everything, Raptor Lake doesn't win everything. Um, in here on the all core load, Intel's you know 4.6% faster than the uh, 7950X. Again, decent, but not 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 gonna like change the world. Against 12th gen. 46% faster though. I mean, okay. clearly that lead, those more cores help against the uh, 12900K. And again, uh, against that 5950X, 48% faster. So it's got a very decent lead against both older parts, but against the 7950, it's a lot closer. The other line to pay attention to though, is that red line, which is single threaded performance. Cause Pavre, you can run single threaded, you can run all, all cores more or a single core and 
you're sort of seeing the flex that Intel has with Raptor Lake. It's not a huge difference between the cores. There is larger cache. Um, there is higher clock speeds. Uh, in the end, it ends up giving Intel about a 12% advantage over 7950X on a single core. So 12% uh, 12 versus 7,000, 7, 34% against Ryzen 5000. Hmm. 5950X again, the weakness of that chip was it just didn't push the clocks as high, didn't mm. have that single thread of performance, that IPC, and it's a pretty big advantage for 13th gen over it. Hmm. Okay, well, continuing with the single threaded performance, let's uh, double back to Cinebench. What, what are we seeing here? Yeah, uh, you know, kind of similar. Uh, again, so we're looking at 13th gen versus 7000. Solid 11%. I mean, that is very decent. Again, I'm, I'm, it's not going to change my world, but that is a very decent performance. It is very hard to get single-threaded performance increases. Uh, it's about 14% here against the 12th, 13th gen to 12th gen. Huh. And 37% against that 5,000 part. I mean, the 5,000 part in single-threaded performance is looking a little dated. Well, and uh, and honestly, the the 7950X, you know, didn't take that much of a lead over the 12900K. So, I mean, this is this is, puts it comfortably in the lead. It's a comfortable lead, you know, and it's it just puts them back in front in something I think is important. And of course, remember, we just looked at uh, where you're doing 3D modeling, which is one of the workloads a person could do in a computer that really does fit into a lot of different cores, a lot of threads. Um, it doesn't always scale. A lot of applications where you think you're gonna need all these cores don't always work. I think you gotta look at the results we're seeing from single-threaded and multi-threaded performance here, and maybe try to apply that to some real-world applications. Mm -hmm. All right, well, speaking of real-world applications, how about something near and dear to my heart, content creation? Uh, first up, let's let's look at some, uh, some photo editing scores, shall we? Yeah, so we're gonna kick this off with Puja Bench. This has long been a benchmark uh, and ap application where generally lightly threaded performance is a benefit. And here we see Puget Bench Photoshop giving the 13th gen about a 12% advantage overall against the uh, 7000. Uh, big, bigger bar better. For bigger bar better. And again, this, I mean, it really is funny here. Look, check this out. 13th gen versus 12th gen. Again, referencing claimed 15% improvement in spec. We're looking at 15.4 improvement in Photoshop. <laughs> And that's a, as real world as you can get. Photoshop is basically the application that makes a platform. If you do not have Adobe Creative Cloud and Photoshop on your, <laughs> on your hardware platform, you do not have a real computer. So it doesn't get any more real than that. And again, look at Ryzen 5000. It's got a solid 35% improvement overall score against that, uh, that older Ryzen 5000 part. I will say though, because this is the one point I want to note this, and it's going to take further investigation. The, the official sanity check numbers, when you get a, a CPU for review, they basically give you these numbers to go like, you should hit these numbers. Here's what we got with these settings. You know, obviously this is not, we're saying use these numbers. You're saying if something is wrong, you may want to look at something. My score was uh, considerably higher than Intel's score, even though we actually used uh, the same on the overall right. score. Overall score, their score oh. was lower for the 13th gen than than my version, and I kind of really rack my brain on this. Like, what is going on? Because there are a lot of things. I mean, remember, I'm using the same power supply, the same amount of RAM. Both of them were DDR5 6000 on both on all three of the platforms, um, but. You know, the AMD was obviously using Expo memory, and for Intel, I was using uh, uh, XMP memory. I was like, what is going on? We're talking Windows 11. Why am I seeing this difference? And it turns out that the Intel IGP, I've not had a chance to talk to Intel or to really talk to Puget Bench mm -hmm. or to dive into the numbers to see what is going on. But if you turn on the Intel IGP, you will get a slightly depressed score, maybe 10%. Oh, a depressed <laughs> in, score. In Puget Bench with Photoshop. I don't know why that is. My guess is it's basically putting an action onto the IGP and either the driver optimization is not there or simply, by the way, big ass GeForce RTX 3090 might be faster than that IGP. So that might be what is going on. It could be a software issue in Adobe, but I just know that if you turn on the IGP in this, you will get a somewhat depressed score. Huh. So we're gonna dive into this a little more because I'm like, this is the problem with benchmarking. 
I gotta like move on. I can't spend a week trying to figure out what is going on because that is often what it takes more than a week because you've got to talk to all of these companies. But this is with the IGP off here. Hmm. Okay. And I also, I do want to note for AMD, it didn't make any difference because they just don't really seem to get. Ah, that's, that's a bummer. Uh, well, but if they're all using 3090s, wouldn't the GPU score be the same? You would think so, right? But it isn't. And I'm. that's another thing that you really got to look into because the GPU score for Pusha Bench is based on certain filter actions. Mm, okay. So what I need to do is uh, break out. So I broke this out. We'll break out even more scores to see like what is going on. We'll talk to Pusha Systems. We'll talk to Intel and AMD and hopefully uh, Adobe. But I don't know what is going on, but I, it's one of those things that is obviously different in all of these things. Is it possible because the CPU is faster, it's feeding the GPU more? I, I'm not really sure, because hmm. you would expect them to all be the same. I have seen them all appear to be the same before, but it's one of those unfortunate incidents. Sometimes you come away from a review with more questions <laughs> than answers. But the, at the end of the day though, let me tell you that if you are running a 13 gen, with a big fat GeForce card and you turn your IGP off and you're using the same filter actions as what they're using in Pusha Bench, any good benchmark should publish everything they're doing. And Pusha Systems does, you can go look up exactly what they're doing in their test. You can go like, oh, interesting. Like I know there's like content aware fill that generally has favored Intel CPUs because obviously mm. Adobe has worked very closely with Intel for a long time. Yeah. They have worked very closely with NVIDIA. Those, those developer relations, those optimizations make a, a difference. I know people go like, well, that's unfair to my favorite vendor. I'm wearing that shirt. That's not fair to me. I will say that's cool. I don't care. I'm doing this for work. I just want the fastest thing. So it depends on where you're coming from. You want to make sure it's the absolute fairest in the world for the world, or you just want the faster thing for you. Hey, whatever works for you, basically. All right, well, what if you want the fastest CPU in uh, Adobe Lightroom? Well, what's the results on that? So for Adobe Lightroom, we're again using Puja Bench, using Lightroom Classic. It is, of course, unlike Photoshop. A lot of the things that you saw in Puja Bench Photoshop, most of the actions do not lean into heavy CPU use, not all cores. There are things in, in Lightroom that generally use more cores. Um, and we actually see two scores from Puja Bench Lightroom. Overall though, the 13th gen wins. It's got a nice 7% advantage over Ryzen 7000. So it, that's a solid win. But again, uh, 7%, not, not gonna change, not gonna rock everybody's world, but that is a very solid win. But there are two scores you can see there. One is the active score, and that is when you are actually in the interface of Lightroom Classic and you're moving around and you're going into the developer and you're applying actions and all that stuff. That's what that attempts to sort of wait. It's snappiness, snappiness. Overall snappiness is the way I would describe it. And look at this, we're looking at uh, a very nice 11% advantage for the uh, 13th gen over Ryzen 7000. That's that's pretty decent. And I guess I kind of expect that. You know they. You know, they're both pushing very high clocks. They're both pushing a lot of power, but you know, either in, well, you, it's using more power obviously, but you know, the end result is that if you're actually the kind of Lightroom classic person, like I gotta have just the most snappy thing in the world, 13th gen is gonna be snappier. At the same time, can you really feel an 11% advantage? I, it'll probably depend on what you do. Obviously this is, you know, this test is just around a certain set of actions, but uh, I will tell you, I mean, <laughs> that's still a pretty good increase and one w that I would care about. I mean, I, I, you're sitting there, at least from my yeah. workload, I'm sitting there for hours editing uh, photos. Then when I'm ready to export, I select all of them, export, go go get a, you know, a cup of coffee or something like yeah. that. So I care more about actually driving the system and having that snappiness than the, the passive score, which is just export. Yeah, and that's the thing we need to point out because passive score is really a, a trying for Pooja Bench to sort of approximate Lightroom Classic when you, when you export. Again, like I said, there's different photographers, they want more speed when they're actually using it, or they basically want to export it faster. It just comes down to what kind of Lightroom Classic user you are. Yep. Winner again is still 13 gen, but now we see that margin close to about 5.6%. Hmm. So honestly, pretty close. Again, those big cores paying off. And again, I don't think you're gonna get perfect scaling out of these uh, these cores like you would say like in Cinebench or Blender or, or V-Ray because they're just, it's just simply not built that way, but still uh, 7,000 closes up the gap nicely here. Next up uh, is Premiere Pro 
And uh, I want to start this off by saying, uh, in, in the last review video we did with the Ryzen 7000, uh, you talked a little bit about IGP on versus off. And there yeah. were some people saying, Gordon, it's not fair to, uh, to have the IGP on for, uh, for this, this testing. Uh, what, what would you say to that? Well, one, I disagree because, um, first, the official guidance from Puget Systems is if you have an Intel IGP and you're a heavy Premiere user, turn on the IGP. I mean, if you have it, you might as well use it. Why would you buy it unless you buy an Intel KF part? Frankly, I don't like the KF parts myself. Because um, I like I like having the advantage of having that built-in media engine, which is what you're getting with QuickSync. The rest of the the IGP I don't really care about, but I really want that media engine that's inside of that IGP. So, frankly, I would pay the thirty bucks for a K part over a KF part. I don't know why people buy those. Somebody is. Frankly, my recommendation is you buy the K part, even if you switch the IGP off. But if you use Premiere it's a big boost and because a lot of that is Intel has worked very closely with Adobe for a long time. We're talking years and years and years, just like Apple has, just like Nvidia has, and just like AMD kind of has. But we're talking when it comes to Adobe, you throw money at it with more engineering resources, it's going to help, <laughs> right? So I would want a quick sync on. So, but yeah. I do understand. You know, like, well, what if I'm running a KF part? I don't have the IGP, so I actually run it both ways. So we see a result for the uh, 13900 with the integrated graphics on and off. And I will say, I have run this on the Ryzen 7000 part. I did not see any uplift at all because, again, that really makes a difference. Hopefully, it'll come. Hopefully, it'll come. Hopefully, it will come. And then we can we can look at. I it hope again. it does. Yeah. And I do understand you with your red shirt and your foam finger going. That's not fair. This is cheating. Uh, as someone who only cares about getting my job done faster so I can make more money, do I care about your feelings? That's up to somebody else. That's, I'm just saying as a photographer if I or video editor, it just comes down to I don't care about fairness. I just want to win. And <laughs> that is basically what a lot of people will think. I do hear you though because I do wish that there was more optimization for AMD products because you're looking at a 34% improvement Ooh for the 13900K overall score for Puget Bench Premier versus that Ryzen 7000. That that's a big number. You can't you can't ignore that. That is a very if you have very, IGP on on if on you the have chip. IGP right that is that is really big and of course. Um, if you only look at the overall score, you're missing the whole picture here. There's even more we can dive into at another point. If you look at that chart, you can see where it all comes back to. Live playback score. And that, once again, I think for me is more important than exports. Live playback, you're sitting there, you're editing, you're driving around. You want that footage to, to be crisp and clear and, you know, and not drop any frames. Uh, so when I'm sitting there editing a video for hours and hours, I want a smooth experience. When I set to go uh, encode it, <laughs> I'm, I'm stepping away. I'm, go, I'm going and doing something else anyway, even yeah. no matter how fast it is. So, uh, Just to give you an idea, 13900K versus a 7950X in the live playback score in Puget Bench using, again, real-world application, Adobe Premiere Pro 22.6.2, 94% higher score in live playback, Ooh. right? <laughs> that is, and again, look, look at Alder Lake. It's not that different than Alder Lake because, yeah. again, that is where you're getting software optimizations. And yes, again, I hear you AMD fans, you're cheating. I'm not cheating, but uh, somebody is just winning, I think. If I were Intel, I'd say, we're not cheating, we're just winning. Maybe you should have got in here and given them this 10 or 15 years ago because it's taken a long, heavy lift. There's a reason why Apple is just simply really awesome these days and it's because of this too right they yeah. work very closely that means you got a lot of people you're paying engineers you're paying their benefits you're paying for their vacations to go help people at these companies and that <laughs> is extremely valuable that's where you're seeing that yeah. and yeah. again if you're somebody like adam if you're somebody like willis do i care about who what fairness i only care if i just want to be faster so i think but even even with the igp off I mean, it's right in line with that that Ryzen 9 7950X. Right. So, yeah. So you know, I mean, th those are those are still those are still good numbers either way you slice it. Yeah. So. No. If you're looking with the with it off, it's 
it's it's it's still basically dead even, right? I would like ah oh, whatever to me shrug no difference, right? So it's uh it is I generally yeah K part wins like yeah. I mean May quick sync wins here so right but that gives them that still at, at least for edge. now at least for now hopefully AMD will bring it because I, I think I would love to come back and see these these numbers again and be like, hey, you know what? AMD gives IGP with all of its chips now, and you see a, a tangible benefit like that right there. Obviously, if you're just gaming, this ain't going to matter. But yeah. If if you're doing if you're doing work like this, like it does matter. Uh, and I guess the one thing I also want to point out too is this is a benchmark. It's awesome because you're using a real benchmark. It's, I mean, a real application. Everybody loves Premiere. They love Photoshop. They love Lightroom Classic. But they are taking a certain path through this application. True, true. And you may take a different path that does not entirely match this. Yeah, maybe you don't use RED. Maybe you don't use ProRes. But in general, though, in general, you know, I can say it's the only, it's the only guiding light we have right now. You can go in there and sort of poke out the infinite different ways you run these different applications. But... If at least this is a number that is real, so there is value there. Yeah, yeah, and 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 a close approximation. But it's not the only benchmark game in town for content creation. There's also Procyon. So talk to me about the uh, the photo scores from Procyon. Yeah, so this is a benchmark made by UL. This uh, again, I mentioned that sort of like path you're taking to the application. Well, Puget Bench takes one path, and Procyon takes a different path. So basically this is again using the exact same version of Photoshop and Lightroom Classic that I used previously with Pojit Bench, but it does a different thing. And again, like all good benchmarks, it publishes what it does. Go look it up on their website to see what they did. But overall, we're looking at a solid, what, 9% advantage for 13900K over the 7950X. With Pujit Bench, you run a separate instance, separate run for Lightroom. More in depth, you run another one for Photoshop. Uh, UL Procyon is a little more condensed. It basically runs Photoshop and Lightroom and then spits out a score. It doesn't do quite as much as what uh, Puget Bench is doing, but it does it slightly differently. Basically, this again shows you that what you are doing in the applications may not matter quite as much. Mm -hmm. So, but again, I think we should people should do is go look at some of what Puget Bench and look up what Procyon does to look at matches. But overall. I say the solid winner though is you you can't beat uh, 13900K and you can't beat 7950X. Uh, we're looking at when you're looking at Procyon photo link though versus an older 12900K, it's 26% faster. Good job. Versus the 5950X, 26% uh, faster. So a uh, definite big advantage for 13900K over those older parts. What, what about uh, Procyon's video editing score? So again, same things, using Adobe Premiere. Um, unlike Pujit Bench Premiere, where it kind of gets into, well, we're gonna look at live playback score, we're gonna do all the scrubbing. This is really judging mostly just exports. Hmm. So they're not doing all the like real-time action. Like, like again, the live action performance is not really mentored by Procyon, which to some people matters more. But to a lot of people, they just like their exports to be faster. Okay, well, who's who's the winner then on this one? So the winner, uh, by a slight margin, is actually uh, the 13900K, 16.5% over 7950X, hmm. which is actually about the same as 13900K uh, versus 12900K, which is we're seeing about 6.7% 6 advantage for 13 gen and a very decent 22% advantage for 13 gen over the Ryzen 9 5950X. Hmm. Okay. And it doesn't break out the sub scores like the others do. It basically simply says, we exported these four different workloads. It takes a long time. This entire benchmark takes longer to run. I could run Puget Bench many, many more times. Than that. <laughs> it's just a very, very large file, so huh. very long. Interesting, okay. Speaking of exporting, uh, you also do Handbrake. So who, who's the big winner in Handbrake? So uh, for Handbrake, I love this app. You should go out and download it. It basically is a free encoder, uh, transcoder that you can get. I basically take the Tears of Steel 4K file that's free, and I convert it from uh, 4K MOV to, 4, uh, to uh, 4K H.265 at 30 frames a second. This is simply CPU encoding because some people love to use the CPU to do video encode. It's just simply better. Okay. Winner um, actually is Ryzen. So yeah. you're actually seeing about a 5% faster encode on Ryzen 7950X with those 16 big cores versus the eight 
plus 16 cores of Raptor Lake. So again, 5% is really not a big deal, I think. Yeah. But it, again, this is sort of like what we sort of saw with Blender, sort of what we saw with V-Ray. Yeah, yeah. It's just some things where, you know, maybe the big cores pay off, maybe you're power limited. Maybe it's because these applications can't scale to 24 cores as, they, as well as they can from 16 cores. I don't know, it would take months of investigation to figure out. In the end, if you're doing encodes and you want the absolute fastest, winner is Ryzen 9 7950X, okay. but not a game changer if you ask me. So let's move on from heavy uh, benchmarks and, and, and workloads, you know, in, into something a little more light and casual. Uh, we'll, we'll, let's first off, let's start off with browsing, uh, because I think that's, you know, honestly where a lot of people spend their time on their computer. So, well, what are the scores for a, a, a browsing performance? Well, um, uh, for this, I basically load Chrome. One caveat I do want to note is it is impossible to use Chrome as a benchmark unless you go back and retest every single thing because the second you fire Chrome up, it likes to update itself. So we are basically running Chrome 10X because the previous three parts were tested with 105 point dot 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 and this is 106 dot 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 dot. Generally, it doesn't ever move much. I need to go back and update it, but uh, but the advantage here in very lightly threaded benchmarks is gonna lean toward 13 gen. Not a huge amount though. We're looking at about a 6% advantage in Web Expert 4, mm. um, which is a long running benchmark, but still browsing tests are very light. Yes, I know, of course, you're gonna say, well, browsing, why would you have a high-end CPU to do browsing? I agree, but if you're buying a high-end CPU and not doing browsing would be even, even more unusual. We all run Chrome, we all run browsers, so it is very valid, <laughs> but you're looking at a very decent 6% in Web Expert, 5% uh, for 13 Gen over 7,000 in Jetstream 2, Speedometer 2.1, 7% in Mobile Motion Mark 1.2, 13%. Nice, nice bump for 13 Gen over 7,000. Uh, not total game-changing experiences, but still solid wins. Uh, of course, the big win is against the Again, sort of like that. It looks, it's looking a little weaker now. It's Ryzen 9 5950X. You're looking at a solid 26% higher, right, score for just browsing. So that's just gonna mean overall a little snappier. I mean, 25%, maybe you won't feel it. It's just mean it's just gonna be a little bit crispier, right? A little well, bit. How different, Very undefinable. But how different do you think the numbers are gonna be if you were on the same version for testing? Uh, we're gonna go back and find out, but I don't think it's gonna change much. Hmm. Um, honestly, it doesn't. It doesn't often move very often. So we will go back and look at this once again. It's just the single threaded, lightly threaded performance of five thousand. It's just. I know. I love these parts. I love them. They were. They were historically good, but we have CPUs that are much faster and a lot of things people do. And you gotta consider that. You just gotta consider that. Speaking of applications everyone uses every day, uh, let's talk about Microsoft Office. Uh, or actually, now it's just Microsoft 365. Yeah. I'm, we're just gonna call it Office. Just gonna call uh, it Office. So what, uh, what can you ex uh, people expect if they're they're using these applications on 13th gen? Uh, so again, I'm using UL's Procyon, exact same benchmark as before. I load Office 365. Okay. I run this benchmark. It basically gives me approximate performance of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, doing very much realistic workloads. It's a really cool benchmark. If you're interested in the Office drone stuff, which honestly, uh, most of the world is probably doing instead of driving Adobe products or or Maxon products or V-Ray. Most of us are sitting behind Office, unfortunately. That's fine though. And actually the overall score, they're kind of dead even. 7950X and 13900K are hmm. essentially the same same score. Okay, that's wild. But part of that, if you look down at the scores, is Word, for some reason, my 13th gen part was slower than I expected. Uh, because it's actually slower than the 12th gen part. It, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's actually 14% uh, slower than 7950X in Word. Huh. Right? That is, is it a bug? I, I don't know what the bug is. I don't know exactly why that is. I actually have to investigate this. It is a little hard to use Office for benchmarking, but I still think it has a lot of value. The word is just, word is just a little off here. <laughs> in the end, I can't take away from Ryzen. In, it's even. However, there are some breakouts for 13th gen 
In Excel, where generally more cores are better, hmm. it's about seven and a half percent faster okay. than, uh, yeah, than Ryzen 7000, right? So that's very decent. Not, not game changing, but again, quite a bit ahead. Uh, it's basically dead even in PowerPoint. But when you get to boring old Outlook, apparently something about Outlook loves that 13 gen part. It's a, <laughs> it's a very healthy 18% faster than the 7950X. And then of course, when we flip over to versus 12900K, uh, overall it's about nine, nine and a half percent faster than uh, 12th gen. It's slower again in Word, but when you get to Excel, 13 gen is a very, very solid 20% faster than uh, 12th, gen. 12th gen. Wow. And uh, PowerPoint, 11% faster. And again, Word, <laughs> it's all about 13th gen where you're getting a 21% performance buff over uh, 12th gen. And of course, the bad news for AMD Ryzen 5950X is even with that depressed Word score, it is still faster than the Ryzen 5950X by 29% overall, 22% hmm. in Word, 36% in Excel. That to me is pretty big because Excel is really where people drive very complicated CPU intensive workloads. PowerPoint, I guess if you do more kind of like star wipes in PowerPoint, <laughs> you can do them faster by up to 22%. You could end your meetings so much faster. So much more faster with fun pictures of your cat <laughs> that everybody wants to see in that meeting. And in Outlook, yes, you can answer emails from your boss. 43% so faster. faster on 13th gen over Ryzen. It's like, Gordon, 5, why didn't you get back to me? I know you have a 13th gen. It could have responded much quicker. And I will say that is the one, this benchmark, among all the benchmarks here, is something you can go to your IT department and say, hey, look, I saw this video on PC World. 13th <laughs> gen is so much more faster on Office. Because your IT department's going to say, you don't need 13th gen. You're not a gamer. You're not editing video or photos or doing all that really cool stuff. You're just doing office work. Yeah, but look, it's so much faster than 12th gen, right? Yeah. 20%, I use Excel. Bigger bar Get better. me 12th gen, give me 13th gen. <laughs> that will work on your IT department. Like It's like waving catnip. Oh, it's faster in office. You're right, I will give you that. That's how it works, folks. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Uh, okay, well, uh, g continuing down the benchmark train, uh, let's go to everyone's favorite, Geekbench. I don't know why you continue to run this, but you're going to put it in there anyway, aren't you? I am going to put it in there. I, I've traditionally rarely run this. I have used it in the past. I don't often use it. It can be a very controversial benchmark. Most of the controversy is when you're trying to compare Apple this versus PC that. It's just used as this bludgeon for people to beat each other silly over. I think though, when you use it within the same platform, it has more value, which is what we're doing here. That makes sense. Uh, and I, the only reason I'm also kind of using it is because out of the blue, AMD started to use Geekbench. Like, I don't think they've ever used Geekbench before publicly, and suddenly they broke that out. I'm not sure what, what reason they did, but because it is like, okay, they called it out, let's take a look. And uh, there's two ways to look at it. You run uh, multi-core and single core. That's what they call it in Geekbench. And for multi-core, Geekbench favors 13 gen. Hmm. Pretty healthy 9.2%. And in single data performance though, 2.3%. And I think a lot of this, that is a lot closer because there is a little more AVX 512 in this benchmark. Oh. Uh, remember, <laughs> Intel doesn't have AVX 512. Oh. Uh, I think there's a little bit of that at play in Geekbench. Uh, of course, the thing about Geekbench, is there's like about 20 different tests that it runs. But, you know, overall, slight win for 13 gen. And of course, big wins, I would say, against uh, Ryzen 5000, where you're looking at 28% in single core pretty big win and you're looking at 54% multi-core. So those are big wins over Ryzen 5000 for 13th gen and yep. even against 12th gen, 12.5% in single threaded, single core and 34% in multi-core. So in Geekbench, if you care about that, somebody does, 13th gen is definitely the winner. It's a lot closer with 7,000. But what if somebody cares about Crossmark? Uh, what are the results here in Crossmark? Uh, so Crossmark is made by a company called Bapco. Uh, it's an open consortium of benchmarkers. Um, I included this uh, along with Geekbench basically and sort of the more obscure benchmarks. The reason why I kind of like to have this on record is it does run on uh, it does run on Android and it runs on Apple hardware. So you could take these scores and compare it to actual Apple hardware. 
it's a legit benchmark. They publish everything, what compilers they use, what they're doing to determine the scores, blah, 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 blah. Again, the last benchmark I used was Geekbench because AMD said, hey, look, look at our Be Geek Geekbench score. Intel has long said, hey, look at our Crossmark score. I'm like, I have not had it, but since I gave AMD one, I got to give Intel one. Basically what they do is they try to simulate productivity, creativity, and responsiveness tests under the hood. They don't even show you what's going on because if they show you what's going on, it actually takes away from it. It makes it less accurate, right? So by just simply showing you, by basically running in the background the way uh, the Geekbench okay. does it, it gives you a more accurate score, which does trouble people the same way you would you would run Geekbench. But the nice thing is it is cross-platform and you can run it on many different things. It also breaks out different categories like productivity, creativity, and responsiveness. 13 Gen is 11% faster yeah. than, uh, than 7950X. Pretty decent, right? That's a good uplift. I say it's a pretty good uplift and it gets even better against uh, 5950X where they're looking at a 47% increase in performance and 12th gen, a very decent 14%. You know, better performance again uh, against Crossmark. And I will say uh, of these scores, probably responsiveness might be more important and we are seeing <laughs> Uh, 13900K uh, come up with a 24% higher score than the 7950X, which is very good. They publish everything that they do, so it's worth looking at if you want to, but I think it's a valid benchmark, as very much as valid as Geekbench. So I just want to get that on the record. Okay, well, one last benchmark like this uh, is Nero. Uh, what, what are these numbers telling us here? So basically, uh, Nero is made by the long favored. You, you probably remember Nero for burning ROM back when people used to burn CDs and DVDs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. But they actually have this cool free benchmark you can download in the Windows Store or off their website. It basically uh, attempts to analyze uh, performance of AI tagging, photo tagging. I actually have used a version of this and of the actual application before. They've now rolled the same algorithms into a benchmark. <laughs> and they're also going to do some AVC decode and encode. They also do some GPU stuff, which I skip, as well as some SSD performance. The only thing I care about is the Nero score for CPU. Okay. Check this out, though. Uh, the 7950X is a good 7.5% faster Bam. than the 13900K. That's that's a comfortable lead. A very comfortable lead. And when you're looking into the subscore of AI photo tagging, 9% wow. faster. And wow. I, I always feel like Intel pushes AI and things like that. So Yeah, they do push <laughs> it. And the funny thing is NeuroScore was, this is a, the, the benchmark politics of it all. This is one of the benchmarks that Intel was like, hey, check out Nero score. They said this many years ago. It's like, okay, check it out. I've been using it for a little bit. Um, AMD is faster now because by the way, AMD has AVX 512. That's probably a big reason why Nero score is simply mm. faster. I mean, 7.5%, mm. again, not game changing, but a very decent per, uh, performance advantage, 9% in AI photo tagging over 13 gen. and. It's that AVX512, that's really what's in my gut. And, uh, and in fact, even over the AVC decode encode, which is probably just all CPU driven, Ryzen 7950 with all the big cores, 5% advantage over 7950. So again, a winner here, yeah. 7950X. All right, well, when AVX uh, means something, it means something, <laughs> so. Yeah. Good, good job, good job rising on that one. So now let's get to gaming because uh, for some reason a lot of people love to see the new CPU scores for, for gaming. Uh, but you're gonna compress it down into to one little chart, why? I, I do that mainly because I, I don't think it really matters that much, mm. honestly. I know people like to get torqued up over very, very small things. I don't consider to be a big deal. I My personal philosophy is generally buy a bigger GPU for everything, CPUs, just don't matter that much in gaming, especially when you're playing newer games, especially when you're playing games at very high resolutions, you're almost always GPU bound on everything. If you can, go out and get a brand new RTX 4000 part. Go out and get a brand new Radeon 7000 when they came out. Get the biggest GPU you can afford. Basically. Well, maybe that's your problem. You're not testing with a, with a 4090, Gordon. I actually agree. I, I do think we have a problem because I used what used to be the second fastest graphics card, the GeForce RTX 3090 Founders Edition. I test only at 1080p because if you test at 1440p and 4K, you're basically wasting my time. I'm wasting your time. 
<laughs> don't even worry about it. If you're playing at 4K and 1440p, I don't, don't sweat it. Get the biggest GPU you can and don't worry about the CP part. That's my general advice. I'm gonna stick to that. Some people might disagree, but I think you're just burning brain cells for nothing. But Gordon, sometimes you need the best of the best. I agree with you though. If I had a 4090, this actually could change because I think the 3090 and the 3090 Ti are just simply not, not fast enough. Hmm. I really think the math will change when you get to RDNA 3 and when you get into these 4000 GeForce cards, they are just so rockingly fast. I think we may see a bigger spread. Hmm. So okay. at the same time, I only have 3090s to test with. <laughs> only have 3090s. Only 3090s. It is a sad state oh, of the world so where sad. you have to be forced to slum it with a GeForce RTX 3090 to do testing. <laughs> okay, well, well, what about what about the results with your, your, your lowly 3090s? I don't think it matters that much. Although in Ashes of the Singularity, Escalation, which is the poster child of uh, DirectX 12 and all the CPU utilization and all that stuff, we probably see the biggest win for the uh, uh, for the 13th gen, where we're looking at a 61, 60 frames a second average versus basically 52 frames a second. That so eight, is eight frames. Eight, eight frames, frames a second. That's right. you know a lot of people go like, oh my god, that's whatever 16 percent. But I mean, that's a big jump. It is a big jump, but 52 frames a second to 60 frames a second, I'm not going to lose sleep over. As I, am I going to lose sleep over 60 frames a second versus a 12900K at 57 frames a second? But clearly there's something here which, you know, AMD is not doing the best in Ashes of the Singularity, which is funny because this is a test that came along that AMD was very, very much pushing when the Ryzen first came out. Look at that Ryzen 9 5950X. 45 frames a second, yeah. so not great. But honestly, for most things, who cares? If you're looking at um, these scores, you generally see it lean toward 13 gen. No shock, because they are just really, really pushing the clocks. And also- A, a little bit, a little leaning. A little, yeah, a little, yeah. I mean, again, it's not, not barely a lean, right? I mean, maybe like a two degree Gee. lean. I mean, not, again, that's why I sometimes think I don't get too worked up over this. Um, and again, I'm using a slow old 3090 card. Maybe with a 4090, it would change, but Maybe. I ain't got one. Maybe. They're all sold out. But in general, I don't worry about it. Which CPU is better for gaming? I would say you can't lose with any of these. Clearly, the probably the slowest one is going to be Ryzen 9 5950X. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're going to pair a Ryzen, if I'm going to take oh, I will take a I will take a Core i9 13900K with an RTX 3090 versus a Ryzen 9 uh, 5950X with a RTX 4090, I will take the 4090 every day because I'm gonna be playing games at very high resolutions with all the settings turned up. I don't think it matters that much to me. The only thing where you might wanna care is when you're playing those kind of Twitch games. It's very you know low image quality where you need hundreds and hundreds of frames a second and you can see the advantage generally go to 13th gen as well as Ryzen 7000. But again, if you're basically playing a game where you need the absolute highest frame rates at low, low resolutions, 1080p is pretty low these days, but you need to put out 500 frames a second for your panel, buy a Ryzen 7000, buy a 13th gen Intel. That's basically the advice, and don't don't sweat the small stuff here, folks. All right, so well, Gordon, let, let's end all this with your your famous thread scaling performance chart. Uh, st set me through what you'd like to do here. So for this test, I basically use Cinebench R23 um, to try to get a feel for how these CPUs perform, not just simply with a single thread or with a max amount of threads, but everything in between. Because I do feel that I don't know how many threads applications are using, maybe you're using multiple applications. I kind of want to know like, how does it perform in mid range when I'm using, you know, maybe 18 cores or something like that. I just, I just want to know. So I take Synbench R23 and I run it from one thread to the maximum amount of threads. And I also disable the default uh, stress test, which runs 10 minutes in a continuous loop because frankly, it would take me days to run it that way. <laughs> it's still using Cinebench R23, but instead of running it multiple, multiple times, it's simply running it one time. Hmm. Okay, uh, well, if we compare the 13900K to the uh, 12900K first, 
what kind of uplift are we seeing gen over gen? It's really big. I mean, this is actually kind of one of those nice touches that we're seeing from 13th gen to 12th gen that you, you rarely see. Although these days, AMD and Intel, you could say have been knocking it out of the ballpark because yeah. 12th gen offered real, real big advantages over 11th gen, which wasn't that hard, but Ryzen 7000 offered real, real advantages over Ryzen 5000. So they have been both rocking it. And look at this, you're seeing the performance as a percentage, look at that. The big advantage here is, I'm gonna again go back to what Intel said, you're gonna expect 15% and 41% in this particular benchmark that a lot of the actual CPU architects like to use, the chip nerds. This is just simply what we're seeing out of Cinebench, but you're looking at double digit 13% faster in a single thread, 15% faster at two threads. Uh, 10% faster at three threads and it goes on and on and it just keeps climbing. And of course, once you get all the way up to where the 12th gen runs out of cores, because remember it doesn't have as many cores, it only has 16 physical cores versus 24 physical cores. That's when you see 13th gen really pick up that boost where you pick up to 25, 28, 31, 33, 46% by the end. Shockingly fast, I would say, over that previous generation part. And you know, and if you want to think about this as a regular consumer, because I think this gives you some guidance, because it is hard to take a multi-threaded benchmark where you're doing 3D modeling and apply it to what I stupidly do in Office or Word and browsing and Photoshop. On the right side is where you're seeing all that performance from Cinebench, V-Ray, all those heavy core users, an encoder that uses all the CPU cores. On the left side is where you're seeing all that really light stuff. All the, like you're running QuickBooks. If you're still running QuickBooks on your, you're gonna <laughs> see that performance advantage on the left side. And you know, the mid range is where if you're running multiple applications. So, but overall it's a really big increase in performance over 12th gen, solid, solid upgrade. All right, all right, not not too bad. I, I mean, I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend somebody go from 12th to 13th. Maybe, maybe. I, I can make an argument for it. You can I make can an argument, argument for it. it. All right, if both. you live on the right side of this chart, I can make an argument for definitely, it. On definitely. the left side of this chart, I say it gets really tougher because, yeah, it's faster, it's snappier, and I would say you'd be insane to upgrade. So you can feel uh, an email flying out of your, your, your uh, <laughs> outlook just a little bit faster. I wouldn't say that's worth it. If somebody else is paying for it, that's one thing. But if you're talking about a 46% faster 3D render or, or CPU heavy encode, you could justify it. Okay, I right. would generally say no, but you can. Well, I, I, but but I think the, the thing people are more looking at is, should I go 13th gen or should I go Ryzen 7000? What does it look like there when doing this? Yeah, so again, this next chart, the same deal, where you see the actual raw score from Cinebench running from one to, to 32 threads, because that's how many both of these have. Yes, one has physical 24 cores, one has physical 16 cores, but uh, this is where it gets interesting. You remember that chart you just looked at where it's that nice big progression? Look at here, so this blue is the advantage for Intel, where you're getting very decent single-threaded performance uplift over Ryzen. Uh, 7,000, and again, this is against the 7950X, no slouch, you're looking at 12%, 13%, 11%, 12%, 16%, mm. those are actually very solid. But again, is it worth it to get a little bit crispier performance over Photoshop or maybe uh, in office or browsing? That's up to you. You know, if that's really kind of what you do and you are starting afresh and you had to buy something brand new, then yeah, if that's more important, this will definitely indicate you're gonna generally get better performance. And look back to all the stuff we talked about with Word, with Chrome, with Photoshop, Lightroom. On the lighter stuff, that advantage generally goes to 13 gen and the lighter, lighter loads. But the weird thing, of course, is when you get to the middle, and basically, you remember, there's only eight performance cores in 13 gen, you kind of run out of steam and uh, AMD's got all big cores. It's got 16 big performance cores and it has actually got an advantage sort of like in that like uh, range of like where we're like 13, 14, 15, 16 threads because simply, you know, it's it's got bigger cores than this. And by then Intel is relying on its efficiency cores which don't stack up against AMD's big cores and uh, AMD's got like a one to 3% advantage. So hmm. I would say if you're sort of like, your workload is sort of middle, you do a lot of you know multitasking that might operate in this range, then it's probably a wash. 
leaning a little bit toward AMD. And then as we get higher and higher to where we're getting more and more threads, you build up a small advantage for Intel where you're looking at one, two, three, four, six percent advantage. But again, I don't think that's really a big deal there. And you see, again, see that reflected with V-Ray. You see that reflected in Blender and Handbrake where a lot of things were those big cores of AMD really pay off. Yeah. And in Cinebench, obviously, it favors uh, Intel really well. This It just scales very nicely with the, the higher core count. But hmm. I would say if you live on the right side of this chart, it's kind of a wash. You know, I'd probably want to look at like, oh, I do V-Ray, I do Blender, I do a lot of Handbrake using CPU and code. Okay, AMD, probably a little, I'll lean that way. <laughs> if I do Cinebench, if I do Pavre, if I do some things that might favor the cores on Intel, then I might lean toward Intel. But again, if you're doing lighter stuff, and you want the heavier stuff, then you could sort of see the advantage for Intel. Hmm. All right, so, I mean, I, I think in, in all the years we've been doing this uh, chart this way, I, I have not seen it kind of play out like this. This is this is very interesting. It has gotten <laughs> weird. In fact, it got weird with Alder Lake, where you saw the same thing, where you basically were on the gas with those big, big performance cores, and then you hit the efficiency cores, and, you know, they're going up against AMD's big cores, and it just didn't, it just didn't quite, ramp up as much. Overall, maybe they matched them, maybe they were a little bit slower, sometimes a little bit faster, but you know, generally it leaned toward AMD. Ryzen 5000 always had an advantage over 12,000 and a lot of multi-threaded workloads. Hmm. 7000, I would say it's a little more split, a little more split, which on, from Intel's perspective is probably a solid win. You know, because <laughs> yep. I mean, really, they're going at uh, AMD with the, uh, you know, the leading edge, most expensive TSMC process with Intel 7, and they're doing it you know, in a, in a socket they can afford the power in, so. Yeah, well, the, speaking of power, we have another video that you should check out where uh, where we go over the power and uh, and uh, the, the usage and, and things like that, so be, be sure to watch that one. But, Gordon, thank you for stepping me through all of these benchmarks. I know this is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. You've been working hard at this stuff, but, uh, yeah, wow. Th these are some interesting numbers. Either way, you slice it it's kind of a great time to buy a CPU because yeah, <laughs> the, these companies are really going head to head. It uh, is really and, a dogfight. Yeah, you love to see this uh, this kind of competition. So that's fun. Uh, thank you everybody for, for tuning in this long. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, be sure to subscribe uh, here on PC World for more PC hardware and software goodness. We'll talk to you later, bye.